we're going to dive into a little bit of the manufacturing process regarding the vases. And so I've done a little bit more thinking over the weekend and reflecting since the episode. And um, it just seems like you, you learn something new every time you think about these and contemplate how they could have been made. But but I've created this chart that I think can help us understand the manufacturing process a little bit. And so I want to walk you through it, if that's good. Sounds good to me. All right, cool. So um, the, you start off with a rough block, basically, just a rough block of stone, just quarried. You know, maybe you use some pounding stones to chip off the edges. Maybe you take a string, an abrasive string, and grind off the four corners and create an octagon and then, you know, kind of pound it down or shape it into this rough cylinder shape. But they were turning. The They were clearly turning these artifacts on a lathe. There are lathe tool marks on the inside of them. The reason why there's not lathe tool marks on the outside of them is because they were all polished off and polished out. And that that accounts for the lack of concentricity on the outside and the, the lack of perfect circularity on the outside versus the inside. Because we see on the inside perfect round circles when they're sliced horizontally, on the outside, we're not seeing that as much. And as as uh, I pointed out in the episode with Max, it's probably because when you've got a circle and then another circle slightly offset on the outside and another one slightly offset all the way down, and you polish that out, it's going to leave roundness that isn't completely round. It, mm-hmm. It's, it's going to be no, it, it's it's going to leave just what we see on the artifacts that we scanned at the, that Max scanned at the Petrie Museum. So. I think that explains that, and clearly a lathe was used, and different types of lathes were undoubtedly used over time, some very precise and capable of very precise work, and some capable of much less precise work. So check, we got that, but we know that they were using, that they were turning these, and that they were achieving accuracy down to 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch on the Petri Museum artifacts. And so, you know, that's on the that's on the outside. And then on the inside, you're seeing, you know, two to two to six thousandths of an inch and and in just the rings and just, you know, so so what Max was saying was that they are in line with modern machinery, what we could do in modern times. So clearly they were being turned. So it's like, okay, you start thinking about that, and then it hit me. You know, maybe the um, maybe these mace heads were a byproduct of the manufacturing process. Maybe they were the feet. But then the more that you think about that, well, they've got a hole on the top of them. Maybe they were the top of the artifact as opposed to the bottom, you know. And and so when you think about the some of the oldest artifacts are the basalt artifacts, and they have the feet on the bottom of them. I've got two in my collection. They both have feet. Um, And then it's almost like at some point they learned or realized that, hey, I can make a whole new vase out of this. And (laughs) and I don't need the, if if I just don't use this foot, you know, then I've got something that looks like what's right there on the top of that. I can just cut that off at the end of the process using this lathe, just saw, you know, right through that point at which this, this foot meets the, 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 the artifact itself. That accounts for the rounded bottoms that we see on both the artifacts and these uh, these conical shaped jars, mm-hmm. um, and um, and so that could explain that. But then it's like, okay, well, if that's maybe that was formerly a foot, uh, what about these mace heads? And the mace heads have the holes on them, so I think they actually tube drilled through the top of the mace head down into the middle part of the of the block the vessel itself. And so they were drilling both the mace head and the center, uh, the, the actual vessel. So I think they were creating three objects with one block of stone, the top being a mace head that they drilled, the middle being the vessel itself, and the bottom being some sort of other vessel, whether that's a bowl or a dish or a conical-shaped um, a vessel uh, like we have here, or um, potentially another mace head that they went back and drilled later. So I'm going to pause there before we go and kind of look at this diagram and see if you have any thoughts. Or yeah, questions. so a couple of questions, just a level set. Yeah. Um, you mentioned both you and Max mentioned with high confidence that these were lathed on the inside and on the outside, eventually polished. 
What is the earliest known lathe that we're aware of right now? 1300 BC in Egypt. And what's the time frame between that and when these vases? 2000 years. So 2000 years. So what you and Max are kind of attributing is the fact that evidence of a lathe existing 2000 years before any re recorded record of it in Egypt. Yeah. That's a pretty damn big deal, in my opinion. It's a big deal, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's a big deal. I, I feel like the people that are watching this show are past that for the most part. You know, you know, they they know, they know that. They know that that these were clearly turned on a lathe, like like check. And it's just archaeology and and that 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 current model of how these were made just haven't caught up to that reality. They're I think they're begrudgingly attempting to hold on to it because they know that the real truth is coming from a bunch of you know, pseudoscientist wackos like us that are that are like actually doing the work and scanning these things. So, so yeah, uh, other, other thoughts. Questions. Yeah, so just one other question, and we may get to this when we go to this diagram. So stop me if we do, but you mentioned that it starts off with a solid square rectangle. They'll go through, they'll put it into a cylinder and then they will tube drill just so I understand that tube drill occurs while all of those three pieces are still together. Right. So gotcha. wh while all the three pieces are still together, yeah, you, you could do it early in the process. You could do it late in the process. I don't think it matters too much when when you oh, okay. tube, when you tube drill it. You you could tube drill it uh, as long as it's as long as the top is still connected to the middle. You can tube drill it at the beginning when it's still a block. You could tube drill it at the end. You probably want to wait until the rough round shape is created so that you can really align the tube drill to the rough outside shape, you know, so that you're not attempting so just so that you, you make sure that the outside walls and the inside walls are aligned as much as possible. Okay. So it wouldn't be, you wouldn't not necessarily something you'd wait to the end until they're all separated and then go in and try to tube drill it. That would be, that would defeat the purpose of, of these all starting together as one. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got, Right, exactly. It seemed a lot harder. Let me rephrase it. It seemed a lot more challenging and harder once these things are all separated out. Yeah, yeah. You've got a tube drill. Um, you would have to tube drill two items perfectly instead of one item perfectly. So, um, and so, yeah, that would be one of the one of the steps prior to separating the the three objects. So. If we look at these objects, you know, you've got this this cylinder, you start to cut it on a lathe, you're probably using pressure on both sides of the object. So it's really got to be a lot of weight on on the object so that it doesn't, you know, move or get out of place when when you're turning and cutting it. You could be you'd, you'd also be clamping it on on either side, of course, you know, and um, just to make sure that it doesn't move. It could be up this way, it could be sideways, it doesn't really matter, but You've got a stationary cutting device that you're either, I don't think it's going to be handheld because we're talking about granite, you know, and you're going to, <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, there's, you've seen like the, the big, like modern granite ones where that are spinning that like, like with a, yeah, it's not going to work. Well, I've just, seen it on wood before where it, it rips the wood out of the spin, out of yeah. the lathe, rips the tool out. And I mean, the thing, it causes I'm not going to say death, but destruction in that shop. That's wood. I can't imagine that as granite. I've seen one on YouTube that has a granite block that they're, a granite uh, tube that they're attempting to shape. Try to find that for this Yeah, episode. I'll find that and put that in there because yeah. that's what I want to see. Yeah. How fast are, is this spinning? I don't think it matters because I think that the faster you spin it, the quicker uh, you can you can make these things. The slower you spin it, the longer it's going to take. So if it's spinning really fast, maybe you could make one in two weeks. If it's spinning really slow, maybe it would take you two years. But but either way, you're going to be able to produce these things. So I'm assuming if they're producing objects like this, that they're spinning it relatively fast. I mean, it is, you can see on the inside, the circles go all the way around horizontally. So it's not like, you know, it's a really slow process. I mean, they, they're, they're going around in one circle and it's almost like one pass because it's, they're solid lines, you know, on, on the inside. So I would assume it's cutting it pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good question. So what what starts to happen is you start to just narrow it down, both on the top and the bottom, and you can see kind of three vessels start to begin to be created. And then, you know, you would have prior to uh, prior to this image right here, you would have this bull nose going all the way around where the handles are, and then um, in order to remove the material between the handles. 
you would need to begin to not do full rotations. So this part could take a while. You know, you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and that could be, you know, uh, hand powered where you're turning it by hand, foot powered, whatever it was. But, but that's probably how they got rid of the material between the handles. It's just, you know, one half turn each way um, until, the, until the material was gone. And as long as you stay within where you're planning to have the handles appear, you can just, yeah, you just keep going back and forth, back and forth until it wears it down until a point that you want. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you can go back and touch up the space around the handles, you know, at a, at a later time, just to make sure with whatever, with whatever you want, with chisels or whatever you want. Um, you know, on the more precise ones, obviously they've got it really, really dialed in. However they did it, they've got it really dialed in. But then on the top, you start to see what looks like a mace head beginning to form that connects to the lip and the, the neck of the, the middle vessel, the middle object. And so this mace head, um, it's, you know, then, then you would drill down the center of that and you would, you would then have your mace head and you would have the tube drill that goes down into the center of the middle vessel. And you've got the bottom probably... You've probably, uh, you're probably still spinning the whole thing at that point, you know, and then you cut the, you would cut the top off once you're done and you've created the neck and the, the lip and, 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 and the mouth is already there because of the tube drill. You'd probably cut the top off and then just leave it clamped into the bottom part, part of it. And once you've got it clamped into the bottom part of it, it's still spinning. You can insert a tool into the mouth of the object and you're just holding it on by the, by the base, by the bottom. And that tool is now hollowing out the inside of the artifact. And then once you're done with that and the insides hollowed out, you cut the foot off and the foot becomes a, um, it becomes a conical shape that you can, you can turn into like one of these conical shaped vessels or it can become a bowl, or it can become a plate, or it can become, you know, some of these other kind of unique shapes that that we see coming out of the, the pre-dynastic and early dynastic period. So depending on the shape of the block, you have options in terms of what the top looks like, what the middle looks like, and what the bottom looks like. Gotcha. The top and the bottom, the mace head and the foot would be, would their size would be dictated by the size of the vessel that you're creating. Yeah. In the middle. By the block, yeah. By the block in the, the middle. Block, yeah. 